These two actuators are from my 3DOF and 2DOF motion platform. Now, the solution that I came up with for position control with potentiometers, one was placed here on the business end of the crank. So when it turned, this potentiometer would turn around and give me the position feedback. Now what would happen with this is that because it's an analog potentiometer, the let's see if you can see that brush in there which brushes against the carbon which divides the voltage eventually wears off, buckles up if it gets beyond the extreme point the brush can uh, fold right over and then get destroyed and the whole thing just cracks up especially if it slips a bit like that and the crank gets to an extreme it can also snap the potentiometer so there was a lot of um, physical defects basically though this is bad design um, and I wasn't really happy because I kept breaking a few potentiometers um, so what I decided to do was for example on my linear actuator put some slots in there with an LED interrupter type setup where the LED light shines through a slot and switches the um, photosensitive device on the other side which sends out an on and off sort of pulse signal through the wires. So that was my idea. And I also got a um, optical encoder. This particular one spins a one revolution um, pulses this a hundred times. So that was pretty good. I thought hey this is nice and high res for me. I could get a lot of um, sensitivity out of this thing for my movement. Um, and I was thinking of putting it on the the back of this motor here. There's a 40 to 1 ratio gearbox on that. So 40 rotations of this meant one revolution there. So if you work that out, I only need less than 180 degree um, sort of rotation here. So it's approximately uh, 20 turns. So I thought, oh yeah, this is pretty handy. This would this would do the job. Let's have a look on the back there. So I thought, yeah, I'm unhosed. I have my solution. Then of course I had the problem of, uh, well, what do I do with all these digital pulses? How do I make this meaningful? How do I actually convert that to a zero to five volt uh, reading for my motor controller? So I asked my mate Ben, friend Ben, to uh, help me solve this problem. So he came up with this device for me. Really cool. There we go. Look at that. What it is is uh, these are four bit counters. This is a, a microcontroller, which uh, uh, at the moment this is a 16 pulse per revolution uh, opto encoder, which is equivalent to or similar to this one, except this is 100 ppr. So this is a 16 ppr. Um, that microprocessor there, can you see that? Yeah. This microprocessor picks up the uh, pulses of this. It uh, tells um, the count is which way it's going, so it increments or it decrements the count, and uh, that signal then goes into the the two four uh, the four bit counters, which then output out to this R two R ladder, which is the DAC. It's a digital to analog converter, and it sends out a signal um, proportionate to where this is, uh, proportionate to zero to five volts, which I'm really pleased with. So, let's see it going, shall we? Okay, let's get this multimeter out. Get some alligator clips. Connect up the alligator clips to the multimeter. And this out resistor here. And the earth. Let's see if you can see that. I'll just put that there. 
I'll zoom it in a bit. That should center to halfway. So that's halfway. The voltage is not quite 5 volts. And now, if I rotate it one way, it will increment slowly. Now if I turn it the other way, it will increment that way. And I should be able to just keep incrementing that all the way to its maximum. Okay, so I'll just go the other way again. It hasn't got to the maximum yet, but I think you get the get the point. Okay, um, let's just go get this big huge analog meter and connect these to the analog meter. Now, back of that, just put it onto that, and put it onto the back of that, and face it up. So you can see both. Can you see that? And now I go the other way now. And there we go. A nicely incrementing and decrementing optical encoder counter deck. There you go, there's your zero point. And go the other way. Keep spinning and whoa, that flipped over because I went beyond the count range of 256, so it's zero and went back to zero again. So if I just now flip it, there you go. But of course, at the extreme edges of your actuator, you're going to have um, limit switches anyway. So there we go. Let's just turn that off there. And there you have it. This particular circuit steps 256 times to read 0 to 5 volts. Um, if you put another 4 bit DAC on, of course that um, changes it, but I don't think um, we need more than a 256 stepping resolution because um, that really equates to, if I bring out my linear actuator, as so you can see it, it's a 300 millimeter linear actuator. And if I use, say, 256 millimeters of that 300, that equates to one millimeter per pulse of um, movement control or feedback, which I think is good enough. This was my version one, Mark one model. So we just turn this. Boom. This is one here. It's like a bomb, doesn't it?